Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back or welcome if you are new. I'm Tamara. We are going to be spending the day in the kitchen. I had some restocking that I need to do, just some like weekly staples that y'all know I like to make and keep on hand. I'm also going to be restocking the freezer and I'm gonna be making a delicious crock pot meal that you don't wanna miss. I'm gonna go ahead and get supper going in the crock pot since this is gonna take about 10 hours. I like to get up early and go ahead and get this going. I've got about a two to three pound chuck roast there and I've just added that in. I'm gonna season that on both sides with some homemade dry onion soup mix. I'll make sure to add that recipe link down below for you guys. It's one of our favorites. And then I'm gonna to top that with some French onion soup. I'm completely out of my home canned French onion soup. I've already got that added to my next restock list, so hopefully I can get that done soon. But for now, we're just gonna use the Campbell's French onion soup. Use whatever you have on hand or whatever you like best. You can sear the roast on both sides um, after you put the seasoning on, but I was lazy and just skipped that step and just added everything into the crock pot. I'm also going to add on one onion and I've just sliced it up and I'm just going to add that to the top of my roast and then we're just going to put the lid on this and let this cook low and slow for about 10 hours. To go along with our French dip sandwiches, we need buns, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that going. Now this is the second time that I have made this copycat Subway roll recipe, and you guys, it is hands down one of my favorites for like hoagie style, you know, sandwich rolls. This is absolutely delicious. I will make sure to have the recipe linked down below for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and bloom my yeast and then we will get everything else added in and get it mixed up. Um, this recipe is a little bit different the way that it has you do it. So make sure you pay attention to the recipe and don't forget I'll have it linked down below. But while that yeast is blooming, I'm going to go ahead and get some dough going for a loaf of bread. And we're going to do six bagels. You all know that normally is what works perfect for our size of family. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going in my bread machine. I've been having a lot of questions recently about the bread machine and bread and everything. Don't forget, you do not have to have a bread machine to make homemade bread. Just like in today's video, I'm using you know, one recipe in the bread machine and I'm doing the other recipe in my KitchenAid. You can easily take any bread machine recipe and use it in a stand mixer or even, you know, just a bowl in your hands. I mean, you do not have to use a bread machine. The other questions I've been getting about the bread machine is what setting I have been using. So I personally do not bake anything in my bread machine. I only use the dough setting. Um, I just, I feel like the bread just comes out way better in my opinion um, when you just do the dough cycle, let it run its course, and then, you know, take it out, shape it, um, you know, for whatever you're wanting it for, and then let it do that final rise and then bake it in the oven. That's the way I've always done it, and it just always turns out so good. If you bake it in this, it's literally just going to come out like a brick at, you know, whatever size your um, you know bread machine is and so if you take it out and put it in a regular size loaf pan you know or shape it for rolls or you know bagels whatever you want I just feel like it turns out so much better another question I always get is about the yeast that I use and why I bloom it so I personally love using active dry yeast and so you want to make sure to bloom that and make sure that that yeast is active. You want to bring it back to life again and make sure that it is nice and bubbly and it is, you know, ready to use. So you want to, you know, whatever liquid that the recipe calls for, regardless if it's water or milk or both, um, I just put that, you know, in a measuring cup or, you know, just right in the mixer, whatever I'm using. And I add a little bit of sweetener, whatever the sweetener calls for, for the recipe as well. Add your yeast, mix that together, and you're just gonna sit that to the side and let that bloom for about five to 10 minutes. And it's just going to bring that yeast back to life and make sure that it is active and it's happy and ready to make delicious bread. So now we are back to finishing up the sub buns. 
So I'm just adding the remainder ingredients that called for for this recipe. And then I'm just gonna add the flour a little at a time. Y'all, my KitchenAid is on its last leg and with I you I ended up doing a full batch of this recipe because I wanted to have some in the freezer ready to go for me. So in total, this was like seven and a half cups of flour and my KitchenAid was not having it. It was like, nope, it was too much. So I did what I could in the KitchenAid and I ended up having to take it out and I just needed it by hand because that KitchenAid did not sound happy, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this dough by hand and I'm just gonna knead it for five to seven minutes. I'm going to add the dough to a lightly greased bowl, cover it with a towel, and let it sit for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes is up, I'm going to go ahead and get it shaped. So this is going to make 12 foot long size, you know, sub buns, just like you would get at Subway. Um, you can, you know, of course, shape them however you want to, whatever you need them for. Um, but I did just do 12 like normal. These I am going to leave all plain, um, just, you know, plain white. But the last time I did this recipe, um, I did half white and then I did half with like garlic, herb, and cheese on top. They both turned out delicious. I just wanted to do plain white ones this time, but you know, you can play around with it or you know, whatever you might need it for. The first time I tried this recipe, I we did like a Subway bar and you know, everybody could build their own sandwich and these were such a huge hit and they were so soft. I highly recommend trying this recipe. It is delicious. So I'm just gonna get these shaped. Um, you, you know, like I said, you can shape them however you want. You can make them smaller, bigger. I am going to be freezing about half of these. So whenever I go to freeze bread, I like to already have it cut because I find that it kind of sometimes can be kind of crumbly. Um, so I prefer to cut it so once these are baked before i put them in the freezer i will cut them you know down the middle that way they're already cut and then i can you know take them out we can make garlic bread out of them i can you know make grilled cheese we can do you know like hot panini sandwiches um you know i just like having bread you know already cooked bread on hand in the freezer just whenever i need it in a pinch I'm just gonna take each piece and kind of flatten it out and then roll it up. And I like to kind of tuck in the ends. And then I'm just gonna let these do their final rise on whatever I'm going to bake them on because you don't want to move them again after this step because then, you know, they'll deflate. So I'm just gonna put them on a couple cookie sheets and then I will cover them with a towel. And then you're gonna let this rest shaped for an hour to an hour and a half. It's just gonna depend on the temperature of your house. But for me, these took about an hour.
Next up, I'm going to work on restocking the freezer with some chocolate chip cookie dough. Y'all know I love keeping cookie dough on hand. I normally keep a couple different kinds, but we were completely out of just regular chocolate chips, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to mix that up. I like to use whatever recipe is on the back of whatever chips I'm using. Um, it doesn't matter the brand. <laughs> I've always just used those, um, and those recipes have always turned out good for us. We've you know never had a bad cookie from the back of a package so that's just what I'd use I keep it simple um, I love keeping cookie dough on hand if I'm having you know a last minute get together or you know company coming over or honestly if I just want you know my own little cookie you know in the evening I can just pull me out a single cookie and bake it off and it is so nice just having you know cookies cookie dough like that in your freezer when you can just have it whenever you want. So I'm just going to mix this up according to the recipe on the back of that package. I am going to bake some of these, but most of them I'm going to scoop out. And then I like to flash freeze them for a few hours in my freezer. And then I just put them in a container and store them in the freezer and just pull them out as needed. I have been trying to cut back on plastic wrap, so this time around I decided to cover it with a piece of parchment paper and then I covered that with a towel and put these in the freezer and it worked perfect. I did it for these and the biscuits that I'm going to do in just a little bit, so I'm so happy that that worked. That way I can cut back. Now the bread machine is done, so I'm going to go ahead and divide this dough in two. I'm going to do half a loaf of bread and then half bagels. I can normally get six bagels out of half of this, and then I'm going to go ahead and just shape my bread, get it in the pan, and then let it be doing its final rise. It takes about 30 to 35 minutes. It just depends on how warm your house is. And then I'll go ahead and get the bagels going. Whenever I do the bagels, I don't let them do a final rise. I go ahead and just get my baking soda bath going and we'll get those dunked and get them baked.
the hoagie buns were ready to be put in the oven so i'm gonna go ahead and do that i wanted to show them look how much they puffed up y'all seen how little they were at the beginning but when they sit for that hour long proof they are so big so i'm gonna go ahead and get those in the oven i ended up having three pans total so which luckily i have two ovens so it works out for me but i'm gonna go ahead and get all these going now if you wanted to add cheese you know or seasoning you would do that at this point before you put them in the oven but like i said i just kept all these plain For the bagels, I did two everything seasoning, two plain, and two cheese. Here are the sub buns. Y'all, these are seriously so, so good. Make sure you give this recipe a try. It is hands down my new favorite. We've got some chocolate chip cookies and then the loaf of bread is ready to go in the oven as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in and then automatically it is baked very quickly along with the bagels. Everything looks so good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and restock my freezer with some biscuits. If you buy canned biscuits or buy the frozen bags of biscuits at the grocery store, definitely try making them yourself because it is so, so good and it's so easy to just you know, have these already ready to go. You know what's in them and they are so delicious. Now, I personally love making the two ingredient biscuit dough recipe. It is my favorite. It is so delicious. So I'm going to do a double batch of this and get it um, flash put it in the freezer to flash freeze. And you know, you can just pop out however many biscuits you need at a time. Winston and I eat a lot of breakfast whenever Luke is not home, um, and so having these on hand just makes it super quick, um, but I really, really enjoy these. Now, I've done these too with add-ins. I've even, you know, done like a Cheddar Bay version, you know, where you can add some seasonings and cheese, um, you know, you can do that as well. This is very, you know, basic, and you can just have them ready to go on hand. Um, I also get questions about what trays I use. This gray tray that you guys see underneath this bowl, they are cafeteria trays and they are literally the best thing to have in your kitchen to do prep like this especially you know if you're wanting to throw things in the freezer and flash freeze things so I'm gonna do this the same way I did the cookie dough I'm just gonna get this mixed up I will have the recipe that I like using linked in the description box for you guys um, but I like to start mixing the dough in a bowl and then I will you know add it to my cafeteria tray and just kind of work it I like to do this because I don't want to overwork the dough so so I prefer doing it with my hands that way I can feel it and what I like to do is kind of like press it out fold it over press it out and fold it a couple times and that just helps get layers into your biscuits and it makes them super fluffy and tall Now that I got my biscuits all cut out, I'm just going to lay them out on my tray, cover it with a piece of parchment paper and a towel, just like the cookies. I swear that it was so perfect for this. 
and then I'm just going to flash freeze them for a couple hours. You can even leave them overnight. You know, it just depends. You know, if you don't have time to come back to it, you can definitely leave it um, for a little bit. But I, once they are completely frozen, I just take and store them in containers. I used to store them in freezer bags, but I've been trying to cut back on that as well. So this time around, I decided to use some containers that I had uh, got off Amazon. I, this is actually the second time I've purchased these. They are one of my favorites. I love using these for dry ingredients in my pantry, but it actually worked so good in the freezer. I wasn't sure how the lock would do on the top after it was frozen, but I've actually opened these a couple of times and they have worked perfect. So I'm so happy. So I'm just going to add the biscuits in to these. And then I'm also going to add the cookie dough into these as well. And then I just pop these um, back into the freezer. I just, you know, store them in the freezer and then you can just pop out however many you need. I do get questions on how I bake these. So I bake the biscuits and the cookie dough both from frozen. I just put them on a cookie sheet. I do preheat my oven um, to um, the cookies. I normally do like 325 and the biscuits I normally do like 375 to 400 and I bake them from frozen the biscuits normally take about 25 to 30 minutes and the cookies honestly I feel like that's just a personal preference if you like you know softer cookies or harder cookies I would say anywhere from like 10 to 12 minutes but they're so easy and very convenient to have on hand and these are definitely freezer staples Now I'm going to work on a batch of granola bars. I've shared this recipe so many times. It's definitely a favorite of ours and I love it because it's basic ingredients and you can change the flavor profile for whatever you want or whatever you might have on hand. These I'm just keeping simple and just adding some chocolate chips and I've still been trying to use up that rice puff cereal so I'm going to use that in here as well. I will have the recipe linked down below for you guys. After a full day in the kitchen, it's time to finish up supper. So to go along with our French dip sandwiches, I'm gonna make some potato wedges. I have just got some potatoes there and I've just gave them a good wash. I'm gonna cut them in half and then I can normally get three to four wedges out of each half of a potato. I'm just gonna add those into a bowl, drizzle them with some olive oil, and I always say season with your heart, but I like to do salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, some paprika. I like to add a little bit of turmeric. Um, this time I think I added some ground mustard. Like, like I said, just season with your heart. Use whatever you have on hand. 
And then my trick to get nice and crunchy potato wedges is to add a little bit of cornstarch. So whenever I go to toss it, I uh, will add everything in, add a little bit of my cornstarch. I would say a tablespoon or two. You don't want too much. Um, and make sure that the cornstarch is mixed in well with the olive oil and the seasonings. You don't want to see any dry cornstarch. Make sure it's mixed in um, and it kind of creates like a, you know, a coating on those potatoes but you don't want it to be dry i've got my oven preheated at 400 and then i'm just going to lay these down on a parchment lined sheet and then just get these baked in the oven these normally take about 30 minutes but it's going to depend on how thick your wedges are um, and i do like to flip mine halfway through just to make sure that they get nice and crunchy on both sides but i feel like the cornstarch really gives it that little bit of crunch on the outside and then you have that nice soft you know fluffy potato on the inside and here is everything there is the potato wedges they were so good you've got your rolls and I like to use a provolone cheese whenever we have french dip sandwiches the roast just fell right apart it was so tender and delicious this was such a good way to end a busy day in the kitchen thanks so much for spending time with me today I really hope y'all enjoyed it and I will see y'all in the next one bye guys